Okay. So we've been covering here in Missoula um, what's been going on with the post office, talk of operations going to Spokane. You sent a letter to the Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy, Friday, asking him to halt any proposal that would send Missoula's operations to Spokane. Can you explain what led to you um, sending this letter to him? Well, we've been here before. Uh, we were here before when they shut down a Kalispell Processing Center and put it to to Missoula and a Helena Processing Center and sent it to Great Falls and the list goes on. He, the Postal Service has shut down a number of mail processing centers in the state of Montana. And it has had one result, reduce efficiency and delay the delivery of mail. Uh, Montana is a big state. And one of the problems we have, I have back here is making people understand that Montana is a big state. And when you shut down a mail processing center, for example, in Missoula, or potentially shut it down. This is a survey to see if they're going to shut it down. But if you shut that processing center down and, and ship that mail to Spokane, it's an over 200 mile one way trip over two mountain passes. And I can tell you, it just doesn't work. And it will result in further delays of the delivery of mail. Uh, in Montana, mail is still pretty doggone important. And to be able to get mail in a timely basis is really important, especially if it's like a prescription drug. And what we've seen with Postmaster DeJoy is turning his back on rural America and not giving us what we need uh, in the Postal Service specifically to make sure we can get uh, on-time mail delivery. And in your letter, you mentioned sharing some of the concerns that you had heard from constituents regarding, and just to clarify, this would be to move the outgoing mail processing to Spokane, but nevertheless, there are many concerns over this. What are those concerns that you share with Montanans? Delayed, delayed mail delivery. Uh, I will tell you that uh, I get a lot of input on mail delivery that used to be uh, delivered in a timely basis that now people don't trust anymore. It's because previous mail processing centers were shut down. And and I think that this is going to do it again. I hear a lot from veterans that, that ask me, is there any way we can use something other than the U.S. Postal Service to, de to deliver our prescriptions? Uh, I'm going to tell you that is a really bad sign. And, uh, and I don't care whether it's a contract, uh, a lease, uh, a, a document that, that has time sensitive, a prescription drugs, farm parts, whatever it might be, it's really important that we have the ability to get mail on a timely basis. And, uh, and that's, that's really important. The other thing is, by the way, is that we're going to be outsourcing a lot of jobs to Spokane, Washington. I've got a better idea for Postmaster DeJoy. Shut down the mail processing center in, in Spokane and put it in Missoula. Uh, there's plenty of reasons to do that. We've got a great workforce. And by the way, then Montana's don't get shortchanged. Then it's the people in eastern Washington and north Idaho that get shortchanged. And you alluded to this at the beginning of our conversation because I was talking with a union official today and they were telling me about back in 2011, the same facility, there was talk of consolidation in Spokane. As you said, we've been here before, other places in the state as well. What do you make of these consistent efforts to consolidate? Well, I mean, it's shortchanging rural America in this particular case. And, and this is where they talk about shutting them down. It's not in the big cities. It's in rural, rural America, who depends on the Postal Service, I would say, more than the urban areas. And so what we've seen with previous consolidations is mail moves slower. That's that's not shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. When you shut down a facility, for example, in Kalispell, like we shut down the last time we did this, you got to ship mail to Missoula and back. Now uh, they're talking about shutting down the Missoula facility. That means if you're in Missoula, it's bad enough. If you're in Kalispell or Dillon, it's really bad because then it's got to go to Missoula Cross the hump over to uh, cross two humps over into Spokane and then back again. Um, it just doesn't work when weather conditions are good. When highways are, are dry and it's summertime, it doesn't work very well. In the wintertime, it's a catastrophe. Have you heard back since Friday from Postmaster General DeJoy or the agency? 
Now, I anticipate we're going to have to keep pounding on them for a while uh, until they rethink their uh, process here. Uh, look, I I'm all about efficiencies. If you can gain efficiencies and keep the service, I'm all about it. What we've seen in the past is uh, what they claim are efficiencies really aren't efficiencies, and it, det it detracts from service, too. So it's a lose-lose deal for the people of Montana, and it's far past time that the Postal Service quit treating the people of Montana like third-class citizens. And turning a bit more to Mr. DeJoy, his tenure with the agency has been pretty controversial. You know as well as me, 2020, we had mailboxes being removed in an election year. Here we are, 2024, and we've reported on this as well. Missoula is not alone. These consolidations are being explored nationwide. Is, is Mr. DeJoy acting in good faith leading this agency? And I do not believe he is. I think he should be replaced. I think he should have been replaced a long time ago. In fact, I don't think he should have been even put into the position. He was put in by President Trump. I didn't like it when he did it. And I, I've thought for a long time that he's probably working for a different carrier of, of, of goods uh, instead of the United States Postal Service. I'm not a big fan of Louis DeJoy. Uh, I wish uh, there's better people to be had in that position. And I wish to uh, I wish the president and the, the board of super postal supervisors would show in the door. And when you allude to working for another carrier, as you put it, can you explain what you mean by that? Well, I mean, like a FedEx or a UPS. Uh, and I've got nothing against FedEx or UPS. But one of the things that, that really helps in Montana is we've got all three of them out there uh, providing uh, you know packages to be delivered and mail to be delivered. Yeah. I got a sneeze. Bless you. Bless you. Well, that's good. I just broke your ears. All right. No, no, you're fine. Um, and I think a big thing I've noticed with this, there was talk when the mailboxes were being removed. But can you explain a bit for people at home what the process is if he were to be replaced, Mr. DeJoy? Well, the president would have to uh, uh, appoint a new postmaster general. Then I, I think it's uh, it's up to I don't remember if Congress ha or if the Senate has to confirm or not. Uh, I think it's the board of governors that that is appointed. That by the way is sitting there and, and ready to do the job, and they're fully capable of appointing a new uh, postmaster general. But to make it clear, it, the Senate has no role and you can't hold any hearings or anything like that. To... Excuse me, Jacob. Look, we can hold hearings on anything we want to hold hearings on. But as far as his confirmation, no, uh, there's no sense to it because we don't vote on his confirmation. Do you see him staying in this position long term or... Well, I haven't, I haven't, uh, you know, he's been at it uh, probably close to seven years now, six or seven years. I haven't heard anybody uh, talking about pushing him out. Uh, I think he would have been pushed out uh, at the beginning of, of the President Biden's term, and he wasn't. And so it would be, uh, like I said, I, I got nothing against the guy other than the fact that I don't think he really respects the challenges we have in rural America. And, uh, it's it's unfortunate because that ends up uh, causing the leader of the Postal Service to make changes. He's reviewing those changes now. But if we were to make this change, it would, it would change the post office and mail delivery in Montana for the worst. And it'd be that way probably forever. And it'd be another nail in the coffin of the United States Postal Service. And I don't want to see that because, quite honestly, uh, you know, on my farm, we depend on the Postal Service uh, to get our mail and, and to get things that are important delivered, uh, you know, to my mailbox. And so uh, everybody in Montana is like that. If you live out in the rural areas, it's just critically important. And, uh, and you know, um, we could go on and on about how, how the Postal Service has served rural America very, very well uh, over the years. And we should be looking for ways to make it more efficient by making, by improving mail delivery, not taking away from uh, the ability of the Postal Service to work. Senator, anything else you'd like to add? You, you've answered all of my questions. I think you've got it all, man. you got the full load. But uh, bottom line is we've been here before. We saw mail processing centers close in Kalispell, in Butte, in Helena, 
in Haver, in Miles City. Uh, and that isn't even all of them. There's, there's even more than that. And, uh, and I think that, uh, quite honestly, uh, if we're going down this road again, what the last set of closures taught us is that it just decreases uh, the efficiency of the Postal Service, takes longer for a letter to get from the sender to the person who receives it. This is going to continue down that track. And, uh, and it's not good for business. It's not good for families. It's not good for jobs. It's not good for Montana.